two things about not paying the debt off. One and not ever pay 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 your debts. Y'all. Right, right, right. Um, but one is your your credit score goes down, right? So by not paying the the, the credit card in entirety or at least getting it to a 30 percent utilization I'm, I'm sorry, can i just clarify minimum payments i'm talking about minimum payments again min, even minimum payments right minimum payments usually don't really put the the principal down you're just mm-hmm. doing interest we know that from student loans mm-hmm. it's a terrible thing right um but you want to make sure that your credit score is good that way you can buy the house so you have all this cash you have thirty thousand dollars cash twenty thousand ten thousand whatever it is but now you have a 600 or 500 credit score now it's going to hurt you trying to get the house anyway. But how is how is paying minimum payments going to drop your credit score all the way down to a 500 or 600? Because you're still using the credit card. So as you're doing minimum payments, and you're just doing principal, you're still swiping. So you're still buying stuff. So the, right, but the utilization minimum, the minimum is going minimum up. payment will just also go up. Right. But you're still only doing interest. So the principal keeps rising as you keep buying stuff. You're doing minimum payments. So the interest is being paid a little bit but it's still going up because you're still using the card. So eventually you're going to get to 100% utilization and you're going to have to do a lump sum or else you're going to go past your limit. Over 50% of black Americans are unmarried and only 2% of black families in America have a net worth over $1 million. We are on our journey to not only join that 2%, but grow that 2%. Facts. I'm Devon Travell, creator of Black Wall Street, the board game with my beautiful co-host. I'm Sinclair, AKA the health nerd. You can go to our website at theM4show.com, our Instagram at the M4 show and our YouTube channel at Melanated Married Millionaires in the Main. And welcome to the M4 show. This one is probably going to be the most difficult one. And this is using debt or leveraging debt in order to invest and actually create wealth. Mm -hmm. All right. So you got two minutes. Can you go first this time? We got two minutes. Yes, we can. I will go first. Hit it. So I am okay with leveraging debt and to get a little bit more specific it's not paying credit (laughs) card debt as fast in order to to save up liquid cash and then leveraging that you know using the credit card instead of your cash that you can build up twenty thousand thirty thousand whatever in cash to then buy a real estate property and then create cash flow right so i'm okay with that as long as we know we're going to buy some real estate right i don't like having the uncertainty and the interest rate on the credit card keeping or the interest on the credit card keep going every single month and we still haven't bought anything yet so i think it is a good strategy to leverage but i think you need to be one very intentional about it because you know those credit card interests can be you know 20 percent sometimes um so unless you have a zero card interest you're paying an additional 500 dollars, which is losing that money so in my head you can pay off the credit card and then now that you're not paying that anymore you're technically like saving that extra 500 interest that you would have been paying. So, and then eventually you can get the real estate. It takes a little bit, a little bit more patience, but eventually you can still get it. Whereas if you're waiting to buy the real estate, you're spending the money and then maybe you'll get the real estate. You don't know what the monthly income is going to be on that. Is it going to be more than 500? Maybe it's not long story short. That's kind of my stance. I'm just like, let's pay, pay it off and keep going. I yield my time. Mm, okay. Finished early. Yeah. Um, how do I Oops. don't 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 even worry about it. I got you. Thanks. Three, two. I'm sorry. Can it real quick, real quick before we get started? What I, I laughed in the middle of this. Sure did. Someone said, wait a minute, Sanzibar is a real place. <laughs> yes, it is a real beautiful place, and we're island. gonna go and show you. Yes, it's a, a real island. That, beautiful. that was funny. Coast of Africa, East Africa. All right, three, two, one. Okay, so first of all, I just got to give a shout out to Jamal King because I very much has, have out. adopted his his mindset of, of real estate, which is I, I understand the concept of like, yes, we have to pay off our debts, but I'm going to pay off y'all the very last 
because I'm going to pay myself first, which means that's why I like to leverage, like let's leverage the debt to, or let's leverage the cash we do have available to put into future investments. And once we get that, that monthly cash flow coming in, then I'll worry about paying y'all. But for me, even just the concept symbolically of let me pay you off first and then let me wait and delay my own wealth generation does doesn't sit right with me. Like, why are we paying off? Why are we prioritizing paying off these credit card companies? And our, our family is, is now delayed in its wealth generation. So I'm very much like, okay, I got this cash now. I'm going to put it into our vision, our wealth building strategy. And then I will, once we have that return, right? Because the, the whole Burr method that we're working on is that we get whatever we put into it in an ideal world, we get it back. And then we also are going to hold on to this property to get monthly cash flow. So at that point, once I get the money back, okay, now I can go put some of it towards y'all and put the, ne- the rest of it towards reinvesting for the next property. But to me, it's like, I'd rather take the money once it comes back and then pay off the debt rather than like up front, let me go pay off the debt first and then work on saving up for this, for the property. Cause there's just, there's always going to be debt around. Uh, we've got student loans, we've got mortgages, like there's always debt. So I feel like if we are focused on paying the debt off first, we're always going to be playing catch up. Um, so again, I'm not saying never pay stuff off, but I'm saying I'm going, I feel like I like the approach of I'm going to pay the credit cards. I'm going to pay the de- whoever whoever is the debt is for. I'm going to pay y'all after I've paid myself. Very well done. Very well said. So two things about not paying the debt off. One and not ever pay 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 your debts. Y'all. Right, right, right. Um, but one is your your credit score goes down. Right. So by not paying the the, the credit card in entirety or at least getting it to a 30 percent utilization I'm, I'm sorry, can i just clarify minimum payments i'm talking about minimum payments again min, even minimum payments right minimum payments usually don't really put the the principal down you're just mm-hmm. doing interest we know that from student loans mm-hmm. it's a terrible thing right um but you want to make sure that your credit score is good that way you can buy the house so you have all this cash you have thirty thousand dollars cash twenty thousand ten thousand whatever it is but now you have a 600 or 500 credit score now it's going to hurt you trying to get the house anyway. But how is how is paying minimum payments going to drop your credit score all the way down to a 500 or 600? Because you're still using the credit card. So as you're doing minimum payments and you're just doing principal, you're still swiping. So you're still buying stuff. So the, right, but the utilization minimum, the is minimum going up. minimum payment will just also go up. Right. But you're still only doing interest. So the principal keeps rising as you keep buying stuff. You're doing minimum payments. So the interest is being paid a little bit but it's still going up because you're still using the card. So eventually you're going to get to 100% utilization and you're going to have to do a lump sum or else you're going to go past your limit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All right, we're going to get back to the episode in a second, but breathe. If you've ever had a brilliant idea, I'm pretty sure everybody just took a breath right there, right? Because we all have amazing ideas, but I got a question for you. What's stopping you from taking that idea and actually making it into a business, actually executing on your brilliance. My name is Devon Travell, and in 2018, I was able to create, market, and sell my own product while still working a nine to five. And through the years, I've taken the lessons we've learned, the expensive webinars that I've gone to, and the dozens of business books that I've read, and I've discovered seven simple steps to launch your business. If you're ready to take your business idea to the next level and make it real and start making profit, from your passion, head to www.launchitcommunity.com and grab yourself the book. We've been able to make it very simple, affordable, and easier than ever to start that business while still working your nine to five. And we take entrepreneurs every single Friday and we, we talk to them. We teach them about how to use social media. We teach them about how to set up their Instagram account, how to use Shopify, how to use Printful and other tools that can help you Take your business to the next level, but not take tons of time away from your nine to five and your busy life that you already have. So if you're ready to take that idea to the next level, make sure you head to www.launchitcommunity.com. Get yourself a book and join our free accountability calls. Now, let's get back to the episode. Um, the second thing was I and I think we've come to, we come to a kind of a compromise and I believe in, yes, get your real estate cash flow it. But specifically, if you have the plan and the strategy, 
What I don't like is not paying off the credit cards, getting the interest from the credit cards. And then, you know, a year goes by, a year and a half goes by and we still haven't utilized the cash. So, and then we just basically paid 300, 500, whatever it was in monthly interest for an entire year at $6,000 or more, depending on how much is on there when we could have paid it off. And now that 6,000 would have been in our pocket. And I feel like you're, you're talking about our very specific situation, which is that we signed the contract for a property, but that property was a part of a 60 property portfolio. And so it took like a year to close on each individual property before it got to ours. So that's not, I would say a, a normal situation that, that folks find themselves in when they're investing in real estate. It happened to be our situation and we had no idea how long it was going to take. So in hindsight, absolutely, it might've been a better play to, to pay off the credit cards because if we would have known we had a year before we were actually going to put that down payment, then we, yeah, we could have saved up during that year. But I guess in the, I'm, I'm more talking in a more conventional sense of investing in real estate Typically, not too soon after you start looking, you're going to need that money to put down in real estate. So I don't know that it's wise in that situation to pay off your credit cards. Now you're looking for real estate and you don't actually have the cash to put down on a property. So let's say you find a good one. Now you're not ready. And I feel like nobody's going to take you seriously after that because they're going to be like, come back when you actually have the money. Um, so I guess that's what in, in our situation. It, again, it was a little bit of a unique situation where, yes, in hindsight, we probably should have just paid off the credit card so that we can build up the, the cash. We had time. But again, we didn't know we had time. We didn't know it was going to take a year. In another situation, um, you know, it can take, I mean, if, if you're work, working with the right broker, you know the area, you could find something within a month. That's not going to be really enough time to, if you are starting from zero, to build up a, enough to, to put down for a down payment. Uh -huh. So now you're just delaying the whole process for, it may take you six months to build up, you know, however much $50,000 to put down an investment property. So yeah, now you've in that situation, you've just delayed your, your process by six months because you decided to pay the credit card off rather than saving it for the down payment. And I guess that's where we die because the delay in six months isn't a big thing to me because if you delay it six months, but you saved, three thousand dollars and you still have the house you didn't lose your three thousand dollars up whereas if you don't pay the credit card off six months you're paying 500 you're paying the interest right on it for those six months and then you buy the house that could have been six months that you had a tenant in there paying you cat with monthly cash flow it's right. that same three thousand dollars you could have made with a tenant in the property depending on the property and that's why i said it depends on the property that you're able to buy like if we're saving up and we're getting a eight unit right we're about to get five thousand dollars of cash flow coming in then it's like okay that income coming in will outweigh the debt and the interest of the credit card that is a smart investment move in my opinion right you want to always want to make sure you're getting the most out of your money your most your uh the highest roi return on investment so in that case i 100 agree we should wait on the debt so that we can get this eight unit and then that that eight unit automatically pays off the debt and increases our cash flow makes sense but because credit card interest is so high and it's at 20%, not all real estate investments will be higher than the return that you would get if you just paid off the credit card debt. Mm -hmm. you, you give me on that? Yeah, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I'm thinking more long-term, like mm -hmm. you have a property for the rest of your life. So I'm like, that's what I'm thinking about. This seems like such a minute, like, yeah, the credit card, like, I don't know. It just feels like that long-term gains that you will get from the property just would will will be and then also the market that's a, that throws a whole wrench into it mm -hmm. where delaying it six months a lot can happen in six months good or bad good or bad good or bad mm -hmm. but if in the case that it's bad you're going to be wishing that you did it six months before when you had the cash and were mm -hmm. ready to go but then in case that is good it can go it can go either way with the market you know what i'm saying <laughs> and we, we had that one before too so let put your votes in put your votes in credit card debt use I think we actually did a podcast on this back at back in the TH4 days. Yeah, it's like episode 89 or something. The fact that you even have the number in your head. I'm a, I we'll do have this. to go back. I'll do this. Um, but put put your uh <laughs> yeah, there's someone go ahead. Uh put your vote in using credit card debt or uh leveraging the the cash that using your credit card can give you in order to actually buy an asset, whether that is a jet, whether that is a real estate 
<laughs> property. See, now you added business. stuff in there. I said real estate. Real estate I didn't specifically. Take shit. All right, my bad. My bad. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, go ahead and put your votes in. Thank you. Thank you for supporting the M4 show and our mission to increase the wealth of black families. If you received any value from this episode, any value at all, any, 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 do us a favor and give us a like and subscribe on YouTube and Apple, Spotify, all anything, them. all of them, all, all of them, wherever you're listening, <laughs> go ahead and like and subscribe. And after you like and subscribe, make sure you send this episode to at least one family that you really want to see win. We'll catch y'all next time. Peace.